Hey guys, welcome to another video in the Free Sky series, and today's topic is switches. You got your fancy pants radio here, and it has a ton of switches, and the switch that you have in that position in whatever position it is is never the switch that you want, and you wish it was something else. So, for example, this over here is a three-position switch, and I wish it was a two. This one over here happens to be another three-position switch, and I wish that was a momentary switch. And this switch back here is a momentary switch, and I wish this switch was a three-position switch. Well, you can change all that in software. So if you have a particular use case that you need the switch to change, you can go ahead and do it. So we're going to go through that, but first let's go through the examples. So over here I've got my three-position switch, and I use it for gear. All right, and so this is the mix for the switch. And Usually this line is a straight line from here all the way to 100% diagonally cutting through zero. So in other words, the switch middle position would be zero, which if it was a servo would be center. So it's essentially this position on a servo at minus 100 down here, center, and then over the other direction for 100%. And I want it, what I did was I changed it so now the middle position, I'm going to go to it right now, see how the yellow line goes there, is at 100%, and when I go down even one more, it just stays at 100%. And because of that, this switch is now technically a two-position switch. doesn't matter what it is, so it's just gear up, gear down, and this, this one just stays at gear down. All right? So that's that switch. This switch over here is a three position switch and I wish it was momentary. And momentary switches are like using for call outs like battery telemetry, tell me the battery voltage or maybe GPS speed or something like that. And so I want this switch over here to be momentary. In other words, trigger on and then trigger off right away. So I'll just click on, click off. That's what you do when you hit a momentary switch. You click it on and then when you release it, it clicks off. That's what this switch does. And so it doesn't matter the position of the switch, it'll just click on and off. And I have it right now set, so you can set it for like say battery voltage telemetry, but right now I have it set to report the value of this slider, you know, just for this example. So it doesn't matter what, what, what position the switch is in, I just flip it, and it tells me the position of that slider. Move down here, minus 100, and it'll just tell me the position of that. So all I gotta do is, like if the switch is up, just flip it. Notice that it switched um, twice. It told me that twice because it went through the center. When I went from full up to full down, so right now I'm going to go full up. If I go full up, 100%, 100%. it says it twice. Now, when I get into this, I'll also show you how to get rid of that and make it so that your switches don't do that. A lot of people have that issue when they have um, their rates on a switch and they go from low rate to high rate. It, it says middle rate, low rate. It, it, says, it says all of it. So I'll show you how to get rid of that. All right. So the next example is this. This happens to be um, a momentary switch. And I have it right now set to flaps. So flaps, you need a flaps up position, a flaps half, and a flaps down. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the switch. Half flaps. There's my half flaps. Full flaps. There's full flaps. I hit and hold down. Half flaps. There's half flaps. Flaps up. And there's flaps up. So this is now a three position switch, even though it's a momentary. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and build all those examples. At first, I have to go ahead and just um, delete this model and, and start again from scratch so you can see the process all the way through. All right, so I will be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back. So we're gonna do the first example, which is the simplest one, which is making a three position switch into a two position switch. So. Um, again, I started from scratch. This is a brand new model with nothing in it. So I'm going to go hit model over here, which is the same as hitting the uh, airplane symbol down there. And I'm going to go to the mixer and I'm going to hit the center button to go to it. And I'm going to create a new mix. So I'm going to go ahead and click anywhere in there and hit add. I'm going to add a new mix. It's going to be a free mix. Last position. And uh, th this example, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do a gear. So let's name this gear. And I'm just going to do this as an example, but this is essentially making a three-position switch into a two-position switch. The source that I want for the gear is going to be my switch, so say this switch over here. And all you need to do is, in actions, you want to add a new action and do a curve.
So I'm gonna add a new curve. Oh, that was a mistake. Yes, I wanna go over here and make, uh, add a new curve over here. And it, uh, uh, we can name it if we want. I'm not gonna name it in this instance, but we want a custom curve and we want a three position curve. All right, so notice now, if you look at your switch, that would represent switch position one, switch position two, switch position three, one, two, three. And essentially, the bottom would be minus 100, one extreme. If it was, if the switch was over here in the middle, it would be at the center. And then if you want to go the other direction, that would be this point over here. So what I want to do is just change my points and make point one um, minus 100. Okay. Point three, I'm going to make that positive 100. So this would be a regular switch. So bottom position would be there. It would go to there, which is zero, which is the middle position, like in a servo. And then over there, it would go to like two directions. So it's like this, like this, like this. But what I want to do is I want to go ahead and make the middle position the same as the bottom position, 100%. So now let's go back. If I flip this switch, it goes from minus 100 to positive 100 and stays at positive 100 through here. That's it. Very, very simple. So I just made this three position switch into a two position switch. Let's go ahead and do a call out for it. And the call out is, you know, just like, um, uh, what do you call it? Gear up and gear down. But the way I'm going to do it, of course, is special functions. Let's add a new special function. And the, the function that I want is play audio. I want to enable it. Active condition is what? Switch position. So that top position is going to be gear up. And uh, I have a separate voice for this. And what we do is we add a new line. We play a file. And the file that we want to play is gear up. So when I flip the switch, it'll say gear up. And this one's kind of important, skip on, on startup. If you don't want this to report the switch position when you first turn on the model or switch over to another model, do that. All right, so the next one I want to do is the same as this one. So let's clone it. Gear up. Edit it. And instead of the switch C in the up position, I want it to be in the middle position or the down position. So again, I'm going to make this into a two position switch. So when I want to play this audio, it's either going to be in this position or this one. So in order to do that, what you do is you do SC, um, not up, but SC up, but inverted. So hit and hold down, invert. And what that does, what that means is, it, see how that, it's got the exclamation point there and then SC up? It means not. So not SE up. So if it's in this position, see how it's highlighted? And then now it's highlighted again. So as long as it's not in the up position, it'll turn on that special function. So instead of gear up, I want to change this one, edit to be the gear down voice. So now in the two middle positions, it's not going to change because it hasn't noticed a change in it. But once I go here, it's going to go up. And then when I, when I go to either the middle position or the down position, it'll say gear down. Gear down. There you go. So that is now done for uh, making a three position switch into a two position switch. Okay, the next one that we're going to do is making this three position switch into a momentary switch. So in other words, I need this so that anytime I hit the switch, it triggers on and off. And that's it. So whatever position, on, off. And that would make it a momentary switch. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So I'm going to go back out of this and I want to go into logic switches, create a new logic switch. And a logic switch is essentially some sort of trigger to trigger this switch to turn on and off. So I'm going to go over here to function and the type of function that I want. So let's take a look at these functions really quick. So like this one over here is a is equal to X. That one over there is a is around X. This is A is greater than X, A is less than X. So what I want is I want this. So this is, let's look at this one first. And that triangle means delta, which means difference. So in other words, if I see a change 
in X or change that's greater than a certain amount, um, then trigger the switch. So I want this one though, because what this means is either positive or negative value. So this one is only positive, greater than, and this one is positive or negative. So if the switch changes up or down, it doesn't matter, it's gonna trigger that switch. So I want that one. And actually let's label, oops. Let's go ahead and label this. And let's label this, um, I don't know, three, two, Oops. All right, three to momentary. So I think that'll work. And the switch that I want to use is the source is A. Okay, and I want to use this switch. And the value um, that I want it to change, oh, I'm sorry, I got to go back up here and make this one what I said, which was this. Delta, positive or negative, is greater than X. So X being 0%, that number doesn't really matter as long as it's under 99% because this switch changes 100. So it's minus 100 to 0 to 100. So every time you hit the switch, it goes 100 difference. So let's just say 7%. really doesn't matter. Okay, somehow I hit inverted. There it goes. And yeah, you want it normal, not inverted. I must have hit that by accident. So notice that the switch changes from red to green whenever I hit the switch. So this three position switch now is used to, tr to trigger this logical switch and it just flashes on and off for a quick, a quick moment. There it is. So now this is now, a, uh, that switch is now a momentary switch. So to use it, let's for example, do a call out and let's go ahead and create one, add one, and let's go play value or play audio and enable that active condition. And instead of using a switch to turn it on and off, I'm gonna go ahead and use that logic switch. Okay, it's three to momentary. And voice one's fine. And add a new line of sequence, go over here. And, whoops, I'm hitting the wrong one. I'm hitting reset, add new line sequence. Sometimes this thing moves one when I do it. So add a new one, play file. And uh, actually, no, I don't want to play a file. I want to just play a value. And a value is, say, this value over here. And this could be telemetry, battery voltage, or whatever. So now, 69%. every time I hit that switch, whatever position this is in, 100%. it'll tell me the the um, the value of this um this slider over here. But of course, that could be a GPS call out. So you could be flying along and you, you come up to the switch over here and it doesn't matter. 100%. 100%. It'll call it out. Now, there's one thing wrong. So a lot of people, when they use like say high rate, medium rate and low rate or whatever, when they flip over, it does that. It calls out the, you know, the middle value as well, even though you went through it really quick. 100%. To get rid of that, Let's come out of this and all the way out and let's go to system. I'm gonna go over here to hardware and I wanna to go to switch settings. And take a look over here, switch middle detect delay. I'm gonna change that to be, I don't. I think 10 milliseconds is more than enough. So now, like before it would call out twice when I'd flip over to the bottom. Now it only calls out one. So in other words, it will not detect that you went to the middle if you went through it really quick. So this is under hardware. And let's go back again, hardware and switch settings. So just remember that, just change that to 10 milliseconds. 100%. And now it's not gonna call twice, okay? And that's great for your half flaps and your full flaps or your, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, half rates and full rates. All right. So that's it. So now I've got this switch over here, which is now a gear gear up and gear down. Gear down. Two position switch instead of a three. This three position switch is now a momentary switch essentially. 100%. And now we're gonna work on this. 
Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna do the momentary switch and make into a three position switch. So I'm gonna essentially make this switch into a three position switch so that I tap it, it goes up. And like it goes from uh, flaps up to flaps half and then flaps down. And then when I hold it up, it'll go to flaps half and then I hold it up again, it'll go the other way and it'll go to flaps up. So in order to do that, it's more logical switches. So let's go ahead and go into logical switches. And let's go ahead and add a logical switch. And this is going to be, let's call, let's call this one. So momentary to three position. All right, so we need two of these logical switches, one for the tap and one for the hold down. So let's go ahead and do the tap one. So this is a momentary switch where you hit and hold, you know, you hit it and then let go and it, you know, just turns on and off. But I need to do make it in, into an even fancier momentary switch. And the way that I do that is with edge. So the trigger on condition is going to be this switch in the up in, in the up position, which is SH down. See that arrow down? But if you let go of it, it'll go back up. So just hold it down and then hit return over here. Okay, so with that switch, when I tap that switch, it'll turn on and activate that. But the only but the difference is I want to add this. So during 0 0.0 seconds to say 0 0.04 seconds only will it trigger that switch. And the reason why I want to do that is one difference between a hit and a hit and hold. So if I hit it, they see the green over there, it activates the switch. But if I hold it, it will not activate that switch. So we need that differentiation. All right, so this is good. Let's just make sure, yep, everything is good. And I want to create one more momentary switch. Add. Let's call this one. Momentary, like the reverse of it. Momentary to three position switch reverse. Okay, so this function, let's take a look at the functions really quick. So what I want is I need this to be hold, hold up, and then release. So what I want it to do is I want to hold up first for like, you know, like to know that I, I'm holding it up instead of just tapping it up. And then I need it to release the switch for me because I don't want it to just keep continuously going up, 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 up if I did hold it up. So I want to do an equal. So A is equal to X and A can be this switch. Uh, so the source is that switch and I want it to be value. So right now see that um, the value Flipping the switch is not happening because when I flip that switch, it essentially goes all the way up to 100%. So I want to go to 100 over here. And so now it'll activate that switch. But what I want is I want... Um, is it? So a max duration of 0.1. So when I hit, it just... Once I hold it down, it um, turns on, but it just turns on and flicks on for a second, then turns off like a momentary switch should. So let's take a look over here at the list. So the two bottom ones, if I do, if I tap. Oh, I forgot one thing. So edit. Delay before active. So I want to hit and hold down, but I want to differentiate between the, the momentary that I have where it just taps on which was set to, I think, 0.4 seconds. So let's just go 0.5 seconds. So now I got to hold it down for at least 0.5 seconds, then it'll turn on. So if you take a look now, let's take a look. So looking at the two bottom ones, if I tap, that one will turn on. If I hold down, 
that one will turn on and turn off. All right. So what do I do with this? How do I make this into um, uh, a three position switch? So I've got this switch, which has two different modes, either a tap up or a, a, or a, a tap and hold. I want to put that into a variable. So let's get add a variable and let's name this one, let's, uh, I guess the same thing. So let's go momentary two, three. And the range is correct because minus 100 to positive 100 is the, um, the switch, you know, like a, a three position switch would be minus 100, zero, then, then 100. So that's correct. All right, so um, what I want to do is I want to add a new action, and the action that I want is triggered by a logical switch. And the first logical switch that I want to trigger is the momentary to three. And I want to add, I want to add a value of 100. Okay, so now if you take a look at where it says value over there, I tap the switch, it'll go to 100. And then the other one that I want to add, so that's correct, is let's add a new action. And the switch that I want is the reverse of that. It's the momentary to um, three reverse switch that I created. There it is. And instead of an additive I want it to subtract, and I want to subtract the same amount, 100. There it goes. So now, if we take a look at the value, think of minus 100 would be switch at the up position, and then zero would be switch in the middle position, and um, 100 would be switching in um, the other position. So take a look at value over there. So I'm just gonna go back to highlight it right there. So look at that. If I hit and hold down, it'll go to zero. Hit and hold down again, it'll go to minus 100. I tap, it'll go to zero. Tap again, it'll go to 100. There's my three position switch. Tap or hold down, zero, 100. That is flaps up, tap, flaps half, Tap, flaps full. So now we go, we're going to go ahead and take this and put this into a channel to control it. So I'm going to go back here to um, Mixer and I'm going to add a new one. And it's going to be uh, a free mix. Last position, let's go ahead and call it flaps. Okay, the source that I want instead of a switch is now my variable. There it is, momentary to three. So since it's over at the end, see that yellow line is over at the end, I know I have to go backwards. There's my half position, and there's my uh, flaps up position. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is add a sound. So we have the switch working. We just have to now add a call out so we can hear flaps up, you know, flaps down, and all that. So um, generally, you do that over here in special functions to do all your all your audio stuff. But what I need to do is I need to create a trigger because there's no longer an actual like it's a virtual switch position that's controlling the special function, not a real one. So we have to go ahead and create um, those switch positions. Unfortunately, we can't do that in special functions. We have to create some logic switches. So I'm gonna create a logic switch over here and it's going to be, let's go add and let's call this one, uh, let's call it F L P, uh, do that again, F. Can't hit F. FLP up. 
and that's going to be a is equal to x, source is going to be variable. Okay, and it's going to be that momentary to three variable, and when the value is minus 100, that's going to be flaps up. And I'm just going to clone this. Edit it, the new one that I cloned, and a is equal to x will change the value to be zero. And we're going to change the name to be Oops, half. And let's go ahead and do one more. So I'm going to clone this one. Edit and change the name. Let's change this one to be so flaps full. And this would be in the 100% position. So we could take a look at those three. And if I flip this, right now we're flaps up, hit it, there's, there's that, and then there's that. So it's going to go ahead and trigger every single time it goes to those positions. And then we take those, put those into special functions to play the audio. So let's go ahead go ahead special functions, add a special function. And we want to do a play audio. And we want to enable it. Active condition will be those logical switches that we created. And let's go flaps up. And my flaps up voice is in voice two. Yours will be in voice one, um, or unless you created one in voice two. And um, then I want to come over here, add a new one. Go play, uh, uh, play file. And the file that I want to play is the one called flaps up. And guys, I have a video on how to add your own voices um, or some, some more sounds into your radio if you want to look at that. Um, it'll show you how to do, um, you know, add like, because I have special ones like elevator to flap, uh, fades, holds for, um, you know, uh, a spectrum. Uh, uh, wing sweep, you know, for my F14. So like anything that you want, you can add um, any voice that you want. It sounds just like the, the factory voice. So what was I doing? Um, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to flaps up. There it is. All right. So it'll play file flaps up. So if I go over here, flaps up. there it goes. Okay, that's good. Let's clone that one. Flaps up. Edit it, the new one that I created. And let's do active condition from flaps up. Let's go to flaps half. And then we change the uh, voice to be edit flaps half. And then we'll clone that. and edit it and we're going to come over here play audio and this one's going to be flaps full so this is the trigger the trigger that i created in logical switch is called flaps full and then the sound that i want you just uh you know if you have that sound file in there you can use it if not you can create your own and this one's going to be flaps full so let's take a look half flaps full flaps half flaps flaps up there it is so that's how you do it, guys. Um, remember, momentary switches, um, you actually have a lot of them. So you have this momentary switch over here. You got two in the back uh, on an X20. And then all these can be momentary switches as well. So um, to use these, I like using these as momentary switches because it's nice to use these for, for, for call outs. So you do have a lot of momentary switches on your radio. And if you have um, a different radio, like the new ones, the new X20s, like the Pro and all those, they even have even mo more switches. But anyways, um, just so you know, if you want to use these, these are called function switches. And I have a video on that too um, that I did a long time ago. 
But, um, you know, just a summary, if you go over here, go to Edit Model, so Model, Edit Model, go down to the bottom and see over here it says Function Switches. You can create these, you can make these into a three position switch, or you can make it into an uh, individual two position switch. So this is one two position switch, another one, another one, another one, another one, another one, or you can make them all momentary switches or whatever. Or you can make this even to one six position switch if you want. So just so you know, you do have that option. I like using these as momentaries, and with momentaries, there's a lot of things I can do with them. So anyways, like I said, you do have a lot more momentary switches than you think you do. Um, anyways, that's it, guys. Um, if this video was useful for you, go ahead and um, like and subscribe. Um, if you do have any comments, you can comment on this video. If you do have any in-depth questions, go ahead and email me at all.rc.air at gmail.com and I usually get back to you if it's something that I can help you with and um, if you do have any um, suggestions and any other interesting things that I can do uh, or I can show you go ahead and um, and send it to me so that's it guys thank you very much and have a good day take care